You're listening to the Rod Langway Fan Club. Welcome, everybody, to the Rod Langway Fan Club podcast. I am your host, Jeff Rome. This is a special summer segue edition. I'm with a couple of co-hosts, Mr. Mark Chechnita. I've been brutally burnt by the sun, but my spirit is high, and I'm ready to talk some hockey, so let's get to it. And John Snowden. And I have a sandy bottom. It sure is nice in Fulong. On the beach, under the stars, we've got the campfire going. Yeah, and some ice cold beers in the cooler there. Uh, Jeff loves the, the values, so he got uh, some bar beer. Yeah, it does the trick, though. So why not? You guys uh, drink them so quickly, you don't even taste them anyway. Yeah, let's get to it, though. Let's get to the hockey talk. I mean, we're going to break down Stanley Cup finals. We're going to talk about the draft, of course, and we'll hit free agency. So uh, I guess we should begin with the Stanley Cup playoffs. Jeff, what did you think? Chronological order, yes. Yeah. yeah, well, boys, the Vegas Golden Knights take home the Stanley Cup. It's been a long time for those <laughs> Six <laughs> yeah. long years. That's like, what, like a day and a half in Leafs time. Uh, I loved the playoffs this year. I thought they were fantastic. I know the ratings were down for the Stanley Cup final, but um, what did you guys think? Vegas Golden Knights, obviously, they were the strongest team. They were quite dominant throughout all of it. Uh, Jonathan Marcheseau takes home the Con Smythe for playoff MVP. I loved watching Mark Stone out there. He's such a competitor. So, you know, good for them. Yeah, for me, the biggest takeaway is the fact that here was a team not afraid to roll the dice. Big free agent signings, massive trades, sending off fan favorites like Marc-Andre Fleury. But in the end, it all worked out. And maybe other teams will be bolder in the future and make for a more interesting NHL. Yeah, acquiring Jack Eichel and uh, Petrangelo is amazing. For me, I love that Vegas decor overall. Yeah, one to six. They're all big. They're all mobile. I think a lot of teams would like to emulate that, but easier said than done. And how about their goaltending? Yes, Aiden Hill did not get a lot of love from the Rod Langway Fan Club podcast, but he sure proved us wrong, didn't he? Yeah, does goaltending even matter? You know, not only these teams with no elite goaltending that wins anyway. But you still got to play well, and he played well when it mattered most. That's true. For sure. Well, Sergei Bobrovsky, speaking on the other side of that, I mean, this is a goalie who, he had been in the doghouse with the Florida Panthers, but he sure came through and almost, almost led his team to a Stanley Cup. Yeah, I was pretty hard on Florida at our halfway point and uh, our three-quarter point, uh, but they did it. They clawed their way in. And um, what a team, especially to Chuck. What a warrior. I will remind you that it is a team that I believed in. I thought they could get in there. They did. And for me, the highlight was when they knocked out your Toronto Maple Leafs in round two. You guys were so excited after winning in round one. And it was just great to see them flame out again. Mm. I was so happy <laughs> that the Leafs finally slayed the dragon. They got past the lightning only to go down 3 nothing early. Just took all the wind out of our sails. And uh, we were done in the second round. Very disappointing. Yeah, well, it was a slightly better fate than my Jets. They flamed out in the first round, I guess, to the eventual Stanley Cup winners, so that sort of says something, but winning only one game in the playoffs was mighty disappointing. Well, at least it's better than Boston. That's true. Yeah, wow. Historically great season and out in round one. Injuries did play a part. Patrice Bergeron having that, that hernia, I think, was a massive blow to them. I was pretty happy to see uh, Seattle go on a little bit of a run. Yeah, fun team, fun team. Lots of depth. Uh, I mean, they pulled probably the second biggest upset, unseating the uh, defending Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche in round number one. So that's a huge upset. Yeah, showing once again that uh, expansion franchises can be competitive right out of the gate. Well, let's move on and talk about the draft. Yes, I mean, we got to start at the top. The Chicago Blackhawks select Connor Bedard. Um, no surprises here whatsoever. It's going to be interesting to see what this young kid can do. They have uh, brought in some pieces to support him because it was quite a barren roster prior to that. So, uh, I mean, I can't wait to see. Yeah, Bernard. what do you think he's going to do, Mark, in his rookie season? Well, I like the fact that they brought in Taylor Hall. Here's a guy that can play first line minutes with the kid. Um, Former first overall guy. He knows exactly. exactly what he's going through. So, yeah, maybe, you know, he can kind of take on a mentor role even. Um, former MVP as well. I think he's going to get a lot of minutes. I think he's going to get first-line power play, and I think he'll be close to a point per game. I think he'll come in at like 70, 75 points. I think that sounds pretty fair. Yeah, we'll see. They also brought in Corey Perry, so that could be fun. A couple hey, MVPs. For $4 million. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, just for a year, though. I think that's another, you know, just more veteran support. So smart move by Chicago, knowing the asset they have in protecting it. Really small surprise at number two. Yeah, well, I thought it was a pretty big surprise, actually. Because every single mock draft that I read before 
was always Adam Fantilli, Adam Fantilli. And the Ducks come in and they take Carlson instead at second. And, you know, they've compared him to kind of a Nick Backstrom. So uh, who knows? I think we won't really know for five, six, seven years who won the draft. But uh, interesting pick at number two. And then the Blue Jackets get Fantilli at three. They do get Fantilli. I think they finally have that center. This guy could be a legitimate bona fide number one center. Um, and Columbus has really struggled to find that. So this could be it. Other surprises in the draft? Well, I think the first really big surprise, or the big question was, what was Montreal going to do with the fifth pick overall? Everyone kind of agreed on the top four, so Will Smith went fourth overall to San Jose. And the question was, would Montreal step up and take Michkov? So he was ranked by some scouts as the second best player behind Bedard. Uh, in the end, they go for a safer pick. They go for the big Swiss defenseman, Austrian, Austrian. defenseman, who played in the Swiss League, David Reinbacher. And, well... Montreal social media went nuts. A lot of people are very angry. Some of them are taking it out on this kid. It's not his fault he was picked. People calling him Hitler Jr. and all yeah. kinds of just really stupid stuff. It's These ridiculous. people are not hockey fans. These are sociopaths. So yeah. hopefully he can prove them all wrong. And I don't know. I'm, as a Habs fan, I'm not really sure what to think about this, but we don't really know. You know, we all pretend to be experts before the draft, but uh, most of us have never even seen these kids play. So, Sure, sure. Yeah, disappointing. Uh, hopefully he has a great career in Montreal. Um, of course, uh, Mishkov does eventually get drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers, I believe eighth overall? Seventh, actually. Seventh overall he went. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see when he does finally arrive in the NHL in a few years. What can he offer? Yes, I'm really excited to see... Quite a goal scorer, they say. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes were not afraid to draft Russians. No, yeah. they certainly weren't. No. Shocking, you know, that they go sixth overall. They take this defenseman who... By Shimashev. S- yeah, sh- some people had him ranked outside of the first round. So very, yeah, very wide that that range could of could be, opinions yeah, on he's him. he's a big dude. Yeah, he's There's, got the tools. And uh, Daniil Boot. Yeah. There's always a but. Yeah, interesting. They were not afraid. So we'll see how these guys pan out for the Coyotes. Franchise, they certainly need some help. Picks. Yeah. John, your uh, Winnipeg Jets chose 18th overall, Colby Barlow. Great name. Yes, great name, great beard. Best beard in the draft class for sure. He's a guy, a real character player, good Canadian kid. I think he's going to be a great leader for the Jets. And maybe, just maybe, he's got some offensive pop too. He certainly did in the juniors. So let's see if that game can translate into the NHL. Kid, he looks like a 37-year-old plumber from (laughs) Tobacco. Yeah, Yeah, he's great. (laughs) If we're talking best names, man, uh, Quinton Musty. Musty. Uh, drafted by the Sharks, 26th overall from Sudbury. He's got to be up there. I did feel a little bit old in the first round. There were a couple of former NHL players uh, whose kids got drafted. Yeah, Oliver Bonk, Radic Bonk's son, was drafted. And then the pick later, uh, Yannick Perot's kid, Gabriel Perot, who's actually the third member of that U.S. line, that dominant line they had, goes to the Rangers, which I think a lot of people think is a great steal. Yeah, I certainly thought so. He fell pretty far on the draft. Good for the Rangers. Some people think it's a little bit of a reach. The Toronto Maple Leafs grab uh, Easton Cowan. I like that he's from London. He plays in, uh, he's from Mount Bridges, just outside of London. Plays for the London Knights. They develop players really, really well. I'm kind of excited to see what this kid can do eventually. Sure. So um, how about some of the goaltenders? None went in the first round. How about in the second round and later rounds? Five yeah. goalies yeah. went in the second round. You right. guys know I love the goalies. Five of them sure. went in the second round. 26 went overall. Montreal uh, alone took three. <laughs> wow. That's I know. Unbelievable. Right? Uh, the very first goaltender that was drafted, um, Adam Gehan. Uh, 35th overall to the Chicago Blackhawks. He starred for Slovakia in the World Juniors. Yeah, there's also that big uh, six foot six Czech kid, yeah, Michael, Michael Hrabel. Michael Herbal. So I think it's Hrabel. Hrabel. Uh Arizona got him, and he was touted as maybe the best goalie available. So we'll have to see how that pans out. Goalies are always weird, though. I think that's why they don't they didn't go that high this year. There was no elite surefire guy, so it's a bit of a risk taking a goal. And uh, the next goalie, the third goalie drafted, was Trey Augustine, also from the United States Development National Program. Again, you know, he's got a good uh, pedigree, but uh, it's hard to say with goalies, you know, that for every hit, there are three, four misses usually that early in the draft. Yeah, I think that's why we're not seeing too many go in the first round these days. Uh, the Jets did acquire somebody. We got Thomas Millich. He was the goaltender for the Canadian World Junior Team. Uh, who knows what this kid uh, can have? He's a little smaller, so I think some teams were down on him. I'm hoping he can turn around and, and, and come and become a real NHL goaltender. I'm really pulling for him. Yeah. I, I like the smaller goaltenders. I do. And the guy had an awesome year year uh seattle they went pretty far so hopefully yeah it could be the next uc saros maybe can i get another beer there yeah good call good guys call. Here, guys let's just too. let's just you know 
slow our roll on the beer a little bit here. We still have another segment to do, free agency. Sure, so. come on, sure. summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I get it. I'm, I'm having some beers too, but, you know, let's let's keep it professional, fellas. Sure. All right, free agency. So, I, you know, I've always kind of felt like free agency is a day where teams make massive mistakes. Uh, sometimes the best free agency day you can have is by doing nothing or maybe trying to find that that bargain, that guy who's the secondary right. tertiary asset who you get on a, on a steal of a deal. Any of those out there, John? Well, uh, I've been hitting lots of Winnipeg Jets points tonight. But if we're talking about that, i got to start with uh, Blake Wheeler. I mean, the Winnipeg Jets bought out Blake Wheeler and uh, the New York Rangers pounced right on him and signed him for one-tenth. Nobody was making Winnipeg for 800k. Um, I think that's a huge bargain for this guy. I mean, you know, he's not what the player he once was. He had 55 points last year. Not bad, though, for a guy with his leadership. Can he even afford to live in New York for 800k? Yeah, right. I know he might need a little housing stipend from the team. He was a <laughs> loyal Jet. Sure was. Big changes in Winnipeg, and not the only change. Big trade with uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois going to the LA Kings. Yeah, that's right. Um, Dubois wanted out. We did find a dance partner with uh, the LA Kings. I didn't mind the return. What did you think of that trade, Mark? I like Gabe Velarde, but I would be worried that here's a guy who has already had a lot of issues with his back. As a man who struggles with his back, I know that it's not something that just goes away. If this is the crown jewel in the trade package, I would be a little worried. Fair concern, fair concern. But, you know, I don't mind the fact that we kind of got almost maybe a whole third line for one player who wanted out, who was going to walk anyways. I was worried we were going to really get nothing in return. So I, I was happy. That is the thing with the Jets. They wanted to maintain their competitiveness. So Alex Ilafalo, that is a proven commodity. And yeah, I also really like Rasmus Kupari. I think he could emerge as a, as a good middle six forward as well. And a second round pick. So yeah, all in all, not terrible considering the circumstances they were in. And sure. who knows? The Jets might not be done yet. We've also heard lots of rumors about uh, Connor Hellebuck uh, going and Mark Shifley as well. For me, I guess the biggest bargain deal, I'm going to say Connor Brown. I've always loved Connor Brown. Sure. Uh, really? For the uh, Edmonton Oilers joining his uh, former junior teammate, Connor McDavid. Ah, a couple of otters swimming together once again. A couple of Connors. Interesting contract, though, because uh, the base salary is $775,000, but there's a potential in $3.25 million in bonuses. Now, if he does hit these bonuses, that would actually go over to the following year, Edmonton's cap. So a bit of uh, interesting cap management from Ken Holland. Yeah, getting rid of uh, Yamamoto and uh, Costin as well. Yeah. Mark, what was the biggest uh, bargain for you? The one that stands out to me is Matt Duchesne. I think he's a guy who can still put up 50, 60 points in the NHL. And getting him for $3 million in a one-year deal, I think that's a nice one for Dallas, a team that maybe struggled a little bit with scoring. I think this is a nice addition for them, secondary scoring for them. And Nashville was not done there. Yeah, well, Rijo is sent packing, uh, sent to the Colorado Avalanche for nothing, really. Alex Galchenyuk, who they then did not retain. Yeah, and then Nashville gets uh, Ryan O'Reilly, who walked away from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Interesting move for Nashville. I'm not quite sure where they are, uh, you know, because I don't really think they're contenders. So I was a little confused by that move. I do love Ryan O'Reilly, obviously. I would have liked him better as a Leaf, to be honest, though. Yeah, speaking of Leafs, they also plucked another Leaf from the old tree. Uh, Luke Shen also going from the Leafs to the Nashville Predators. So puzzling moves for a team that... I don't really know what direction they're moving in right now. I guess the mushy middle it is. Not a rebuild, not a contender. I don't know. I don't really like where they're headed. Yes, it is silly season. There's always a lot of head scratchers around this time of year. So what are some of those moves that really made you think, what on earth is this team up to? I would start with the Anaheim Ducks getting Alex Kalorn. Uh, four years, $25 million? Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind paying him $6 million if it was for a year, maybe two, but four years. The guy's already 33 years old. Yeah, on a rebuilding team, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. I'm not sure how much gas he's got left in the tank. They got Radko Gudis. He's a punishing hitter. Yeah, they're kind of small on the back end. A lot of talent back there. Maybe, you know, a little protection for those guys, a little bit of stability. Again, though, I guess they're looking to reach the cap floor some good veterans to help build a re- young team around but i don't know it just it feels like a bit a bit rich of a contract for both of those guys yeah i was a little confused as to why the toronto maple leafs decided to sign ryan reeves for three years i mean this is a guy seems a very toronto move he's obviously big punishing man not really sure if he's the player that toronto needed to put them over the top yeah, I think that the thing that surprised me most was the term, right? Yeah, Three years. for sure. Because uh, he is an intimidating guy. He's yeah. basically the last enforcer. 
Mm -hmm. right? And I do think the team will be playing maybe a couple inches taller and a few pounds heavier with him around. He's a great hype man, but geez, on the fourth line, man, he gets caved in. Yeah, that's the thing, right? He might cave somebody's face in, but he's getting caved in whenever he's on the ice. Um, team toughness is important, but bringing in one or two guys who aren't really key contributors, is that really going to change the way Mitch Marner plays in the playoffs? Well, that's the thing. And now they also brought in Tyler Bertuzzi. Sure. And uh, they bring in Max Domi. Yeah, I don't okay. mind those moves. Yeah, these guys, are, these are some good hockey players. I mean, this is replacing some of the depth they lost with Ryan O'Reilly and Michael Bunting. Hard-nosed guys with talent that can take a regular shift. I do like those acquisitions, but yep. I got to wonder what's going on on the blue line. What do you think, Jeff? Well, they bring in Klingberg. Now, we needed a guy who had a bit more offensive flair, but for a guy who's so bad defensively, yes. I'm just not quite sure about this one. It's only for a year. Feels a little bit like Tyson Berry 2.0. Totally. The first version did not work out very well. I don't know. I, I would have been gone for more of a minute munching defensive defenseman. Yeah, it would have been nice to see the Leafs be able to get someone like Dmitry Orloff. Yes. yes. Now he got a big deal. He sure did. It's only two years from Carolina, but that was quite a deal. Yeah. Well, traditionally, Carolina is not a team that likes to throw money around. They must feel like they're getting close. They're going to be a little frustrated after not getting over the hump again this year. So I, I like this move from Carolina. Yeah, it's bold. he was probably one of the biggest uh, free agent D-mans. And um, also, Corpusalo was probably the biggest goaltender. He went to Ottawa. Oh, how about for you, though, Mark? Uh, what was another team that kind of maybe surprised you a little bit with some of their moves? You know, Detroit. Steve Eiserman's usually got a pretty steady hand, but they, they spent a lot of money this offseason. Yes, they did. Uh, bringing in Justin Hall three years, just a shade under $10 million, that's kind of weird. I mean, this is a guy who is, you know, you're a Leafs fan, Jeff. You know how much he struggled last season for them. And I like JT Comfer, but five years, $25 million. Again, too long and too much money. Yeah, I, you know, I, obviously he's looking for some depth. Um, but Detroit, where, again, where are they? I mean, obviously they're hoping the rebuild is done and that these young guys can really step into primetime roles this year. I'm just not sure these pieces are the particular ones that would really help them along. Yeah, and in addition to that, they bring in the Ghost, another defenseman. They bring in Daniel Sprong, who I, I think could be a good... Yeah, I like that one, actually. That he popped one. 20 goals this year for Seattle. That's yeah. not bad. Uh, James Reimer, I mean, is this guy still an NHL goalie at this point? I don't know. And then they bring in Christian Fisher. This is another bottom forward comes over from Arizona. I don't I don't really love any of these moves, and it makes me wonder where this team's going. And the new general manager of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Kyle Dubas, he comes over from Toronto. He wastes no time putting his footprint on this team. Yeah, uh, they've kind of done another mini remodeling of their decor, much like last season when they sent Mike Matheson out, brought in Jeff Petrie. That was just a disaster. Uh, this year, they've moved on from Brian Dumoulin, and they brought in Ryan Graves uh, on a big contract from New Jersey. So I'm not sure how this will work out, but there's, you know, they're changing things up again. Yeah, yeah. again. I didn't mind some of the forward depth uh, moves that they made. They're bringing in Lars Eller um, and also Nola Chari. That's sure. good center depth to have. Those guys are both veterans who have performed in the playoffs before, so I don't mind that. Yeah, and they've brought in a new goalie, perhaps to compete with Casey DeSmith for the backup spot. Alex Nedeljkovic. This is a guy who had a great first year in Carolina. Not such a good year last year in Detroit, so I think they're hoping for more of a first-year Nedeljkovic than second year. Well, the other big thing is they brought back their starting goaltender signing Tristan Jari to a new long-term deal as well. There's right. some question marks around that as well, so uh, doubling down on Tristan Jari. Let's stick with the black and gold and the Boston Bruins. They brought in some veterans. Yes, they most certainly have. Milan Lucic, he began his career in Boston. He is back in the black and gold. Uh, it's going to be cool to see him back there. Uh, and then they, they went bargain hunting. Uh, they bring in Kevin Shattenkirk for some D-depth. He maybe can help out on the power play a little bit. Uh, what do you guys think about them bringing in JVR? Do you think he has any goals left on his stick? Uh, I mean, he was a great player in his prime. I'm, I think he's well past that, unfortunately. It's weird, though. Boston somehow brings out the best of some of these veterans. Maybe he can rediscover his scoring touch, chip in 15, 20 goals if things go his way. That would be yep. huge. Yeah. Uh, a younger guy they brought in, uh, Morgan Geeky who I thought was pretty good for Seattle last year. They did not qualify him, making him UFA, and uh, I thought that was a decent sign for $2 million a year. Yeah, I didn't mind that one. No, I like that one. I like geeky. Yeah, you're a bit of a geek yourself, I am John. a bit of a geeky. Another team that was pretty busy uh, this offseason was the Florida Panthers. I was really surprised they dealt Anthony Duclair to the San Jose Sharks. They didn't get a whole lot in return. 
now, but they were able to acquire Evan Rodriguez uh, in free agency. Is uh, that an upgrade? Is it an upgrade? That's a very good question. I think we'll find out next year. I think it's close. I'd like to see what this guy can do on this team. Florida really feels like they're close to a Stanley Cup, and I think they felt like they needed to replace I that talent. Rod is more of a Swiss Army knife, play up and down the lineup. Sure. A little grittier, maybe. A little grittier, yeah. Maybe not quite the offensive talent that Duclair has, but yeah. Yeah, and I don't mind them taking a gamble on recently bought out Oliver Ekman Larson. Uh, it wasn't so long ago that he was considered to be you know, a solid top four defenseman. Maybe he's still got some game left. He's not that old. What do you guys think? You think he can do anything for them? Yeah, I guess at that price, why not? Yeah, I think it's a reasonable price. A uh, big buyout from the Vancouver Canucks. I'd like to see him have one more shot at, at uh, you know. If he's playing some... a sheltered bottom pairing role, I, I think he could still be a serviceable NHL defenseman. Yeah. Okay, boys, really, I've had enough of hockey for the summer. I am hitting the water a little night swimming. Let's go. Who's joining me? All right. Hey, guys, well, guys, for me, Patrick Kane Let's is go. still Thanks out there, listening. Vladimir Tarasenko, and they're gone. You know what, guys? We'll cover whatever we missed in the preseason rundown. It'll be coming up soon enough. Enjoy your summer. Hope you had yourselves a time. Well, I, I, I hope you had yourselves a time. Hope you had yourselves a time. Hope.